Inside Science. Why do we dream? Well, Sigmund Freud said, dreams are the hallucinatory fulfillment of a repressed infantile wish. Now that was 100 years ago. How do we think about dreams now? Well, we can describe dreams as vivid, sensory and motor hallucinatory experiences. Now, think back through your own dreams. And they share common features. They have a narrative. They generally involve other people and those people are often hostile. And dreams are always shaped by our own individual experiences and memories. But how can we actually learn about dreaming? Well, first you need to find someone who is dreaming, but you can't just ask a sleeping person to tell you whether they're dreaming or not without, well, stopping them dreaming. But you can do something almost as good. There is a stage of the sleep cycle called rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep. During REM sleep, nine out of 10 people report dreaming. So researchers often use REM sleep as a signal that someone is dreaming. Those flickering eye movements have even been suggested to correspond to scene changes during dreams. Now, this might seem a little counterintuitive, but during REM dreaming, we're conscious, but in a wonderfully strange way, it's because of the neurotransmitters being released into our brains. When we're fully awake, we have acetylcholine, serotonin, and noradrenaline sloshing around up there. But during REM dreaming, there's only acetylcholine. Acetylcholine can trigger the activity between our thalamus and our cortex that makes us conscious, but without serotonin and noradrenaline, we're not actually awake. We're caught in dream consciousness. In this state, we see vivid, hallucinatory dreamscapes that are generated by activity in high-level parts of the visual cortex. Vast areas of the emotion processing regions, the limbic system, are also online. In fact, emotional processes are more active during REM sleep than when we're awake. And on top of that, the area that focuses attention and imposes top-down logical thinking is strongly deactivated. So our dreams can become hyper-emotional. It's even been suggested that dreaming helps us process emotional events in our lives. Well, there is one study that found that people going through a divorce who had worse dreams were actually in a better emotional state a year later. But maybe the most popular theory for why we dream is that it helps us lay down memories. And there are experiments that support this view, and the brain's memory encoding system is active during sleep. But if this theory is true, then when you deprive people of REM sleep, then they should have worse memories, right? Wrong. Antidepressants decrease REM sleep and dreaming, but in some cases they actually improve memory. So memory formation is unlikely to be the whole purpose of dreaming. One thing that is clear from all of this is that sleeping and dreaming are very active processes, much more akin to wakefulness than we might think. In fact, when this video is finished, just let your mind wander for a spell. Although you're awake, you'll end up activating the same specific brain network that's activated when you dream. For Inside Science, I'm Ali Jennings. Thanks for watching. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.